I think the major means sort of you've reached the highest level. I think it's a step every player wants to make, um, and it sort of sets itself apart from any normal event. A major to a Counter-Strike player is the biggest event and the most prestigious. I first watched Dreamhack 2013, and that's how it got me into Counter-Strike. So seeing that and now being in a major is a pretty unreal in itself. Making the major is probably like the biggest thing like for your career, and I guess making the first one's always going to be the biggest no matter what. Being a younger player means a lot to like Breeze, Cirque and I, because uh, we've never made it before, so it feels pretty good to like reach this milestone. The main goal is to get legend status. Obviously a consolation would be to just not go to the minor again, which would be winning four matches. Either one I'm happy with. Obviously, ideally we make it to the final um, and win. That's obviously the, the dream scenario, but I guess to start off, I think just we're focusing on getting legend status and then just seeing where that takes us. To make legends right now would be pretty nice, but I mean, obviously, like if we don't make it, it's, it's okay, just because it's our first major. I think the main takeaway I could have from my previous major was you have to take the boot camp and preparation a little more seriously. There's so many good teams here at this uh, in this part of the major that making top eight would be a really good accomplishment for our team, and um, I think we can make it. Wind strike, I think they're underrated to an extent. I think they they have a bunch of players who are pretty good. Um, I'm not sh I'm not sure how good they are as a team because I've only watched them a few times in the, some of the demos I watch, but. They seem like a decent team that can cause upsets um, and we're definitely not taking them lightly. We're preparing for them just like we would any other team. Chet, it's hot. Chet, it's hot. Fix it. Fix it before I get you fired, mate. Why are you like... Are we CT? Yeah. You want CT? Wait, wait, wait. Don't pick it. Wait, wait. I mean, it's the first time you're on the video. No, stop picking everything. I didn't confirm it. <laughs> no, you were about to I said CT. Chet's like, Wait, yeah, you're... of course. Is he playing? Wait, relax. G have completely broken back on win strike. Who are in a position where they may even have to think about forcing. Nice. 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 So versus win strike, we had a good idea what maps were going to be left over in the veto. We got a map that we're semi comfortable with. Started off kind of slow, so I think the first half was like pretty close, and the second half we got off to a good start, and we just like rolled on with it till we won. Uh, we executed our game plan, it was pretty simple. We had a good CT side, T side could have been a lot cleaner, but you know, that's just how it is sometimes. Uh, I mean, we felt confident, so not really much of a problem there. To be fair, they've lost like every pistol, but... I like trains, because I like, <clears throat> like bang them. Like do more stuff, and overpass. All right. I mean, I like overpass, that's my bit. 
I mean, overpass, I guess, is kinda risky because they did just, I'm just like fanatic on it. I'm just like hella comfortable playing A with Zerk. You just like, oh. I'm preparing I'm for BG Gaming. Just beat Winstrike 16 9. Uh, hopefully, we'll get the next W. How do you? Still sitting with no kills. He's played aggressively on short a few times, they just haven't really gone that direction when he has. Well Ethan has a few times and this is what usually happens. That. Ethan is throwing himself at this round three minute off and caught out in the open. Not a man left between them. It's now breezy inside of the site ball being planted. Freeman needs to have a clean kill here just to guarantee the round. He goes down, that's fine. I don't see Sark. Uh, maybe I'm speaking ahead of it. This is Sark at this point. He might win this. Going into the Vici match, the map was Overpass, uh, one of our best maps. And um, all I remember from that match was Ethan just farming them on T-side and made it a lot easier for us to uh, close the game out. Start on T-side and I like owned those guys. He just walked out and shot toward the planter. No scope, he said it goes nice. the way of An NRG show, it can be done. He still can perform at top level. Trust me, those guys are making it to the next stage. We just beat BG Game 16-6 or something like that. They're holding and the tomorrow we are playing Tyler for everyone's playing right now. For the winner's match. <laughs> We kind of knew what maps we were going to play. We weren't as prepared as compared to Windstrike just because it was on the same day. But we're just super confident versus those style of teams. Looks like we're opening up the Sennheisers here. We've got the game ones. It looks like Santa Claus came early. <laughs> <laughs> we got the game zeros. Let me see them. We got six, six game zeros. Yo, pass one over here, man. We got six game zeros. Ooh. All right. oh, Santa came early, guys. Here, come take some. Here. Let me have some. Let me have Santa, thanks. For Tai Lu, with their new additions, I think it's going to be the exact same team, just with a lot more firepower. Going into this match, we're very prepared. Um, we've done everything we do normally for matches, and as long as everyone's warmed up, I think we should be able to win this match pretty easily. Why not? Why not? <laughs> That's the real question. <laughs> Why not? This is going so well for NRG. Look at this. Shots in every angle. A huge shot from Breezy right there, and that's what NRG needed. A little bit more concern for this. Vitality, that's why, because he can hit shots like that. He takes two down, doesn't lose a single point of health, and the call is made. Tai Lu. Their attack is going to be completely hamstrung by this. Since we went 3 0, we were able to have a nice five day break. We've just been watching demos, reviewing the teams we might play, and scrimming a lot. The only thing we're hoping to not have happen is going 0 3 because we don't want to do the minor again. So we're just going to play it game by game and see what happens. I feel like I'm in the Matrix, the fourth movie that never came out. Going into the NIP game, I was pretty sure the map would be Nuke. Everyone wanted to play Nuke on our team. No one wanted to play Mirage. Yeah, nobody has to rotate over. He has all the information of what's coming. 30 seconds left on the clock. Door's gonna get blown open, but Force has been waiting for that all round. Oh my God. Sit down, NRG. Forest. seven kills in the last two rounds. We'll have to see how they decide to change things. That was a very slow played round without a whole lot of pressure across the map. They only have the two weapons and Lecro gonna get himself four, goes for the ace and why not? For the last player left alive is Get Right. Forever on the lurk. He's gonna be going into heaven. Can he stop this defuse? He's not got a kid on him and Nip will get it done in the 30th round. NRG must be heartbroken. We 
just couldn't really find a foothold until the second half. We started to win some rounds, and then the round that really lost us the match is when we lost a 2v5 and lower. I think that match was very winnable. A lot of bad communication and bad rotations lost us in the match. It's round five to see NRG's money truly broken, unwilling to force the time charging into the jaws of Kicker. He should be able to spray them all down, line them up, and then think it's going to be prison. Oh, that couldn't have worked out better. He gets the AK as well. Not at least hedge. He's flashed and he's dead. Krizen starts to go wide on monster. He's got another one. Krizen, I'm, I feel like I'm listing every single player from a Vanguard. They're having these moments, heroic moments. Now, sir, next on the chopping block for Krizen. Three scalps on his belt loop and he's done. Round 12 secured. I mean, that Vanguard team is pretty good. I think they're kind of like us. They're like young guys. You know, they have a lot of talent, a lot of potential to like be a really good team. He finds Daps. Molotov not quite going to connect, James. Got another one. Just two remain. Cirque and Breezy have to save NRG. It's not looking good. It's Krizen and Fitch to fill it. And that is a Vanguard going one to one. NRG thrown into an elimination best of three. Since the Avangar match was directly after the NIP match, it was hard. We couldn't really prepare for Avangar. So that made it hard to sort of like know more about them, I guess, which probably hurt our result. Even though we lost to them, I still think we beat ourselves more than they beat us. Going into the next game, like before, beforehand, we talked about like not playing as scared. Like Cole's roster, they're obviously all experienced. They're the, one of the oldest teams at the major. Their, their whole team is just like a pretty like solid unit. So, I mean, they have some respect there. This will, will continue to inject some cash monies into their wallets, but they've got to do a lot more. Deft has. He's gone aggressive. Pushes out to catch Ethan off of the rotation. Daps is still behind, but he's missed shots. Deft's going to get another. It's a two on two. He might not be ready for this. He's not. AK. AK. He's got two. Go Stan. He's 44 kills and the bomb planted. He wants to get away. Breezy knows exactly where he's going, but standing on the railing, the off angle, he's gonna win it for complexity. Shoulder peeking at first, to see if anyone's there. There certainly are players, and the flashbang is deployed. Can't find an initial kill, it's a bit scrappy here. Ricky gets it, he gets a few, make it three, my goodness. It could end. Fugly's positioned himself on heaven strictly so that he can run in for a trade, and he's not in an open angle for Shazam to take advantage of. This is Dap's dead, no question. Knows Ethan's on the site, but he looks back. He's read it so well. Fugly's gone to the off as well. He can't find the shot. Shazam, he like what can't happened? get the headshot in return, he but is he will get the bomb down. And Shazam beat him to the punch, but Fugly, shoulder peaks, oh gives himself up. Shazam can pull his all back. Oh, he's, he's, done it. Done it. he's done it for complexity. It's 2-0, both in overtime, and NRG are going home. Complexity survived to tomorrow. Right now, we're all feeling pretty bad, you know. We expected to get at least one map, so we don't have to go back to the minor. Our expectations going into the New Legends stage were to make it through to the top eight. Obviously, we're gonna have to play at the next minor, so I think whatever happens, happens. After the game, I kind of told people that they need to play more. Like, right now, it's kind of like Vince or Breeze, and he like owns a lot and gets like a bunch of 4Ks and stuff. And then it's kind of like everyone else is very inconsistent right now. Any vacation plans we had are you know, non-existent. <laughs> That's just gone. Um, but yeah, I mean, my thoughts is just like, we need to restructure some things. In terms of like reflecting on the event, we just have to like talk as a team, like look at why we lost, um, see if there's any recurring themes that have been happening for a longer period of time and then see if there's things that are newer that are making us lose. Because um, obviously it's not just one player's fault why we lost. Like a lot of people made mistakes, myself included. In terms of like what's next, we just have to make decisions based off what we feel and then go from there. Right now we're at the Netgear offices in their gaming facility part of the office and we're trying to train for the Starlighter Shanghai. We had discussed a change previously um, a while ago before the major and we didn't really see any improvement in our game at all. We kind of just crumbled at the end uh, and that obviously led to a lineup change just because, you know, we've been going for so long 
uh, we tried like a lot of stuff. It just wasn't clicking at the end. Like we do with most players is we give a player a warning, give them a chance to prove themselves. Cause I think it's unfair to just cut someone for no reason, just like out of, out of the blue. Um, so we, d we gave that chance to Fugly. We just t thought it was time to move on. It was like best for both of us. He gets to move on and try something new and we get to move on and try something new. So we ended up replacing Fugly for Tarek. I feel like we just needed someone who was more of a playmaker and that's what Tarek's known for. I think with the addition of Tarek, definitely brings us to the next level. Uh, Tarek definitely has the more like spontaneous play style. And then obviously like all the different stuff he brought over from MIBR and Cloud9, all of that experience helps a lot. I mean, he's won a major. He's like won multiple events that are high tier. So he knows what it takes. He makes plays. He speaks a lot. Those are kind of things we were missing in our last lineup. I think it could work. We could, could try it, it. Could it potentially be better if we just run out of it? No dates. You guys could, yeah. Off guard. yeah, yeah, do it like that. It's better. Um, I see a lot of potential in this team. I think that they have a really strong core and good leadership. I've played for a number of teams now, and um, I've been under a few leaders, so I know a lot of different things about how the game can be played, and I think that me coming onto this team, that we could do a lot of damage in the scene. Let's go. Let's go, Benetta. Nice. Good job. I think it's good to do that. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't know what to do. I say the boot camps helped a lot. It's a lot easier to do things in person. We've been trying to cover all the stuff we went over for a year and whatever with Tarek in such a short period of time. So we're just sort of like getting the kinks out and figuring out like how we want to play. Do we want to play fast, slow, um, scrimmy, more structured, that type of thing. So we're just sort of figuring out our play style as we go, figuring roles out. Um, but so far it's, it's going pretty well. So when I joined NRG about a year ago, the team definitely made it really easy to slip in. And I'm, I think we're making it pretty easy on Tarek to slip in. I didn't know everyone personally too well. We played online for a couple of weeks before coming here. And now in person, I think it's been the most productive just because we've been like here together and working all day, every day. And I feel like going into Shanghai, we're gonna be really prepared. I wanna say thank you to all the Energy fans for welcoming me onto the team, and I hope all my other fans will continue to follow me on my journey, and hopefully this will be a successful year together. Come on, get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, grab it.